With Company of Heroes 2, what we're really trying to bring is the visceral experience of what the biggest battles of World War II was, and that's the Eastern Front. The Eastern Front was massive in scale, it was brutal, and it provides so much relevance to give each segment of the game that you play its own meaning. There's a lot of thought that goes into making sure our maps are not only realistic for the time period and the location, but also fun from a gaming perspective. What we're trying to do is create scenarios that um, allow for players to really utilize the terrain and building assets so that you can use those against another online player. Let's say you take a victory point or you move to an area, there will be things that change. Like The enemy might get reinforcements and make a big push. You might get certain reinforcements by losing a point. Uh, you can have this battle back and forth and you can really kind of make your own strategy to this, like what points you're gonna hit. Are you gonna like go for the deep VP so you can do some territory control or are you just gonna play a little bit slower of a game? I think the, the real depth in multiplayer is the commander types. Um, each one has a different set of abilities that can be used and each of those sets of abilities has strengths and weaknesses depending on where you're playing or what you're matched up against. So you can really tailor your, your play style based on what type of play you like. When I first started playing multiplayer, when I started working here, I was just getting greased. The guys from our team, there's a lot of guys on our team that actually like gather for lunch and watch the guys play it. We actually had a, a, a demo map that we played on a while back that had this nice pond with a victory point in the middle of it, so everyone's fighting over that. They're coming across the river, hit the mines, boom, they go into the water, and they gotta re-tech. There's nothing worse than going across the, the river. You hit mines, your tank sinks, and you lose it in one fell swoop. If a tank hits the field and you don't have something to counter that, the game isn't over. And in a lot of other games, if you don't have that hard counter available, you're done, you might as well quit and start over. With us, we wanna make sure there's a bit of give with that, uh, that comeback mechanic to allow people the chance to come back and continue uh, fighting. Asymmetric multiplayer and asymmetric development is kind of a key to the franchise. We wanna present multiplayer armies that uh, can span you know, from 1941 to, to 1945, and so you see the emergence of you know, big Soviet heavy tanks. You see the emergence and domination of the battlefield of, of T-34s. Stalin's famous quote, which is, quantity has a quality all of its own, uh, really reflects the, the feeling of the Soviet army that we have in Company of Heroes 2. They're a little bit more ragtag, their structures look like they've been sort of thrown together, and they're a little bit more on the seat of their pants in terms of how they approach things. The Germans in Company of Heroes 2, they're at the end of their rope. They're an advanced faction. Their vehicles are technologically very advanced for the time. However, they've been at war for years, so the Germans are more defensive. Another new thing that we've, we've added to Company of Heroes 2 is this, uh, this idea of progressing. Uh, and a big part of that is allowing players to unlock content that really gives them the opportunity to customize their armies. What's great is these things will be based on the actual actions that they do. So if you use lots of mortars, suddenly you'll unlock things that have to do with mortars. If you like to, to play with half tracks and, and move guys around the battlefield, you'll unlock progression elements that deal with that. And they really get to make those choices as to what things they want to take into their next match or their next skirmish. We're also adding what we call intel bulletins. And these were actually leaflets and pamphlets delivered to frontline soldiers that told them how to fight enemy vehicles. As you work through the progression tree, you will unlock the right to earn intelligence bulletins. And as you do certain things in the game, you will then be equipped with more information about how to tackle those things and get simple bonuses against them. The multiplayer gameplay and the campaign are intense experiences. Uh, and you know, you apply context to those experiences and people sort of gravitate, you know, in a more emotional way to what you're presenting. And when I play a multiplayer game of Company of Heroes, the first thing I do is we get up and we talk about all the cool stuff we saw. And we're telling stories to each other about, about how the battle went. We're all really passionate about the subject matter and uh, really passionate about the work that we put into the game, so I think it's really gonna show when people play it.